Now, before I get to my story, I would like you all to have a listen to Madame Raven of the Black Legion of Screaming Banshees. Enjoy. I never used to dream. Now I have nightmares every night, and they're getting longer. I have been having nightmares, and they've been getting longer. When I awake, there are images burnt in my retinas, shadows of cinder and blood, ash and smoke, and apple of blood falling, falling. There is something wrong, something uncontained, something unbound, something terrible. Every time I wake from the nightmare, I feel like something inside my head is slowly draining out, out, like pulling a really thick, bloody snot out of your nose after having a nosebleed. That's what I feel every time I wake, every goddamn morning of every goddamn week of every goddamn month. There are memories, memories of the dream, the nightmare, but they, uh, I can't. The memories aren't right. They're not right. They aren't right. They're there, but I can't see them. I can't, it's all wrong. The closest thing I could compare to it is having the wrong codex to play a video file. Maybe I should enable Windows updates. The nightmares started about a month ago. I've never had dreams before. I always slept like a baby. Then one night, I heard something in a dream. Saw something in a dream. Only I'm not so sure it was just a dream. The earth was cold, dead. There was a kid left standing in the ashes. He had done this. Then a room, a riddle, a retching tear, and it was undone. I awoke panicked and felt living webs covering my face. My hair, face, eyes covered with webs. The webs pulsated squirmed and writhed. It's still there, despite my efforts. Very hard to type anything with what feels like a giant ball of spiders crawling all over your face. But I must be crazy because there's no web, no spiders. Not in pictures, not in the mirror. Nobody can see it. And I'm the only one who feels it. Ah, that terrible crawling. It makes me want to dig into my face and claw out my skin, my muscles, my bone, my flesh, my blood. Reduce myself to nothing. Tear until nothing is left. I've managed somehow, managed to ignore the crawling sensation, resisting the urge to scream and tear it out. It certainly took longer to sleep the next night. And that's when the nightmares began. The blood apple, the gash, something terrible slipping through. November 1st, 2015, 4 a.m. I awoke in my bed, soaked in sweat. First came the draining sensation, then the after images. The blood apple, again, forever falling without relent. I've gotten used to the invisible webbing on my face at this point. I shower. Another day alone. Brush my teeth and dress myself to get ready for the day. As I walk towards the front door of my suburban home, I pass the empty rooms and bare walls where my family used to live. I don't blame her for taking him and running but that doesn't make the pain any less. Images flickered through my mind of a happier time. Our wedding, the honeymoon, his first birthday, his second birthday, 
sending him to school for the first time. Oh God, I miss them so much. I can't allow myself more than a second of remorse. My mission, my purpose is too important to allow distractions. I grabbed my jacket and briefcase, got in my car and backed out of the driveway. It's about a half hour drive to the meeting place, but I'd left early so there was no need to rush. I was halfway there when a man stepped out in front of my car. He was about 500 meters out, wearing a black and gray suit. He must have been at least six feet tall, clothes hanging loosely off his bones. I slowed but didn't stop entirely. The thin man pulled out a sleek handgun from within his jacket, and I stepped on the gas. I swerved back and forth to make myself a harder target. I saw his gun flash twice, and holes the size of silver dollars appear in the windshield. Something thick and warm trickled down my face, but I barely noticed. The thin man lowered his gun slightly, tracking the trajectory of my car, and fired once. The front left tire exploded mid-swerve, and my car flipped. For a moment I hung, suspended in the air, a deformed metal cylinder, front flattened out and mushroomed outward floated before my eyes for the briefest second. Then my car slammed into the ground with a bone-crunching force, and I blacked out. When I next opened my eyes, I was looking directly into the thin man's face. He was lying down next to my shattered windshield, his face inches from mine. His eyes were dark holes, his face a rigid mask. I let out a shriek and scrambled towards the back seat. Instead, I fell out of the car and landed on the glass-littered road. Something wasn't right. I struggled to my feet, pushing myself off the ground. My car had been sliced cleanly in two, with the cut barely missing the driver's seat. The asphalt around me was shattered and cracked, covered in deep gouges, burn marks and craters. And lying beside my car's front half, in the midst of destruction, was the thin man. Well, what was left of him, at least. So quoth this raven. My turn. Have you seen this man in your dreams? In January 2006 in New York, the patient of a well-known psychiatrist draws the face of a man that has been repeatedly appearing in her dreams. In more than one occasion, that man has given her advice on her private life. The woman swears she has never met the man in her life. That portrait lies forgotten on the psychiatrist's desk for a few days until one day another patient recognizes that face and says that the man has often visited him in his dreams. He also claims he has never seen that man in his waking life. The psychiatrist decides to send the portrait to some of his colleagues that have patients with recurrent dreams. Within a few months, four patients recognize the man as a frequent presence in their own dreams. All the patients refer to him as this man. From January 2006 until today, at least 2,000 people have claimed they have seen this man in their dreams. In many cities all over the world, Los Angeles, Berlin, Sao Paulo, Tehran, Beijing, Rome, Barcelona, Stockholm, Paris, New Delhi, Moscow, etc. At the moment, there is no ascertained relation or common trait among the people that have dreamed of seeing this man. Moreover, no living man has ever been recognized as resembling the man 
of the portrait by the people who have seen this man in their dreams. If you enjoyed this truly and would love to hear more terrifying tales such as these, then I must encourage you to become a follower of the Black Legion of Screaming Banshees. There will be a link to every single YouTuber that you heard here tonight in the description below. As such, I must also end this by saying, We are the Legion. We are the ones that keep you up at night. We are the sore, nightmarish visions that your mother warned you about. And with that said, I am out. This is the Voice of Nightmares.